What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones, MCJ, back with another video on Power Automate and SharePoint. And today we're looking at the SharePoint trigger when a file is deleted. So what this trigger does is when a file is deleted from a document library, it will trigger a flow. This will be useful in scenarios where you want to be alerted when people delete things, when you want to maybe keep a log of who's deleted what and when. So let's take a look at how this trigger works. So I'm in Power Automate. I'm going to click on add a trigger, oops, add trigger, type in SharePoint, click see more, and then we have a list of triggers here and we're going to choose this one when a file is deleted. So the first thing we need to do is we need to give it a site address, so we're going to use our MCJ site 1, the one we're using for all our testing for these videos and we're going to use our library name, which is the MCJ document library. You can also use environment variables in here to specify which site and which library name you want. Um, that way, when you move this through to another environment, say <coughs> through to a test and a production environment, you can update these so they're hitting the right SharePoint libraries and uh, SharePoint document libraries and sites. In the advanced parameters, unlike all the other triggers we've looked at so far, this only has one advanced parameter, and the one advanced parameter isn't the one that we've seen there in all the other ones, it's actually the folder one. So we've seen the folder one in the ones to do with document libraries, but we don't have the one for li uh, limit by current views, which is quite interesting. So um, we're only going to get certain pieces of information back here. We're not going to get, um, we don't have the ability to uh, get all of the details back from the, from the deletion. So what this folder one does is it allows you to select a folder or you can leave it blank for the whole library. So we can um, pick on, click on this um, folder picker here and we can select a folder for it to run on. So if we want to just run this on a certain folder, so say you have a receipts folder and you only want it to run on that receipts folder in case something gets deleted accidentally, you can absolutely use this um, to, to specify that. Else, if you want it to run on the entire document library, you can um, you can just leave this blank. As all our other triggers as well, we still have this how often do you want to check. So we have the interval and the frequency. So this is the uh, the, the time limit, the, the time in time frequency. So second minute, hour, day, week, or month. And we also have the interval. So this is the whole number of like, I want to check this one every one day. I want to check this every four hours, that sort of thing. So we can just leave it as a standard three three minutes for now. Time zone and start time are kind of linked. So again, with like all the other triggers, if you want to future date this, so you want to say, I only want this flow to run after next week, or I only want this to run after next month, we can put in a start time, which is in the year uh, month date format with a time, and then time zone actually corresponds to that start date. So if we say the time zone is, you know, Canadian time or, you know, East Coast time or something like that in the States, so if it's, you know, um, UTC zero sort of thing, it's going to use that as the start time. So it's, it's, it's going to correlate and adjust the start time based on that time zone. So that's why those things are, it, it, it's not easy to understand, but that's why those things are there. So we're gonna leave it at that and we'll just chuck in another action just to allow the flow to be valid. We'll chuck in a compose, we'll just chuck some details in there and we'll click on save. Now that that's saved, we'll click on test. We'll choose a manual test, or we'll uh, manually test it, and click on test. So now we'll go over to our site library. Here we are on our document library, and what we can see is we've got a file here called Citizen Dev, Dev JPEG, and if I select it and then choose delete, it's gonna ask me, do you want to send it to the recycle bin? We'll say yes, we'll delete. You can see it's deleted there, and we'll go back to our Power Automate flow, and we'll wait for this to run. We can see the flow has now run successfully, and if I choose the trigger, we can see some of the inputs and the outputs, and we'll scroll down to the outputs, and we'll look at the body for the outputs. So the body for the outputs is given as the ID of the item that was uh, deleted. We can see the name of the item, so it sits in dev. We can see the file name with extension, citizen dev.jpg. The deleted by user, so it's, got, it's logged that I was the one that deleted it. 
It's also going to tell me the time it was deleted. And then we have an is folder flag here, which is set to false. It wasn't a folder, it was just a file that I uploaded. And then deleted. So this is really interesting because not a lot of triggers and not a lot of um, not a lot of the platforms that we use, things like Dataverse or SQL, for instance, actually give us the ability to see that kind of like pre-image. So it's given us the details of the file that we deleted. So it's no longer there. So how is it how is it known? So there must be some sort of um, polling of the recycle bin in SharePoint or, or something like that, that uh, goes off and gets that information and pulls it back to the user. So it's actually really useful information in this trigger. So you could, again, set it up to create some sort of audit log of when things are deleted. You could set it up to say, hey, we don't want anything being deleted in this fol file folder. Um, and maybe we've set up permissions correctly, but maybe an admin's gone in by accident or a, you know an erroneous flow's gone in and deleted a, a, a file that wasn't supposed to. So this is a really useful trigger and a really unique trigger, not one that I've really come across uh, a lot in, in my time using Power Automate. You get very limited information with things like when an item is deleted in Dataverse. This is giving us at least some information about it, which is really, really useful. So what do you guys think? Do you use this trigger a lot? What do you use it for? Let me know your use cases in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, if you could like it and share it with a friend, that'd be great. If you've not already, click the subscribe button and stay up to date with all my latest videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.